and welcome back. And today we're back to working on the Centurion. In a previous episode, we got this cabinet behind me pretty much up to 100% complete. The uh, card cage in the bottom is stacked out with pretty much every card that I could throw at it. 256K of RAM, multiple MUX cards, CPU 6. And then right above it, we have a CDC Hawk drive that is fully working, both fixed and removable platters. Then above that, we have a little tray that has a CDC Finch drive on it and a CDC 8-inch floppy drive, courtesy of Curious Mark. Thank you so much for that. And both of those are fully up and working. And to kind of top the package off, we have a beautiful ADS Regent 100 data terminal sitting on top, making this a beautiful self-contained Centurion mini computer system that is really properly specced out. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the Centurion project as a whole is coming to a close. Far from it, in fact. We still have a massive amount of stuff that I want to do with this machine. Just to name a couple of the things on the docket, we have a full another CDC Hawk drive that I got my hands on that we got to get re restored and up and going. We've got a CDC Phoenix drive that's really going to test our capabilities. There's an EDS PC on top that we want to get going as a standalone PC as well as a remote data terminal for the Centurion system. Then we've got the mini Centurion that's got the CPU 5, CPU 5 Hawk drive that we gotta restore, and a newly acquired ADS Regent 200 that we've gotta restore. But above all of that, before we get to any of that other stuff, we got to get to one big bad project, and that is this blue beast over here. This is the ODEC printer, and this is probably the number one requested item to work on, and it's coming very soon. There is one last thing that I need to take care of before we can dive in deep on that, and that is this Finch drive right here. And the reason that this is getting top priority is because it's not my Finch drive. It's actually on loan from uh, Aaron over at Vintage Geek. Now, if you're not aware what Vintage Geek is, it's a very cool little museum over in Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, the guy who runs it, Aaron, is just awesome. One of the nicest guys I've ever had the uh, pleasure of hanging out with. But in his museum, he happens to have a Centurion Micro Plus. These are pretty rare. I've only ever seen one, and that is Aaron's, and it's a really neat special system. It's essentially a full-fledged Centurion mini computer in a desktop-sized package. It has a four-slot backplane that has the CPU 6, a 128K memory, a four-port MUX card, and a Finch floppy controller, FFC card. But that Micro Plus, since it only has four slots, only has two drives that it can use. It has an eight-inch floppy drive, and an eight inch hard drive, which would be this Finch drive right here. Now I went to go hang out with Aaron. We spent a whole day there, filmed an episode on it. And uh, not only did I put an episode up on my channel, Aaron put an episode up on his channel. So go check out Vintage Geek the Museum and go check out Vintage Geek the YouTube channel. They're both awesome. I'll put links down below. But uh, we ran into a problem trying to bring his drives up. This particular Finch drive has a dead short between five volts and ground. And the 8-inch floppy drive that he has has a dead short between 24 volts and ground. So uh, I left the 8-inch floppy drive in the care of Aaron, but these Finch drives are properly rare. And while well, there's only really one way to test these out, and that is with a working Centurion, which we just so happen to have. So today we're going to dig into this, hopefully get it spun up and working, find all of the data on it, back it up, and then get this off back over to Aaron at Vintage Geek so we can get his Micro Plus system fully up and working. Now, of course, because that is a museum and the machine is going to be on for most of the day, we are going to look into some uh, emulation options for drives, so that way we don't have to worry about one of the drives launching itself while uh, it's on display. But that's a topic for a future video. Today, we're all about this Finch drive. So we got a lot of work to do to bring this thing back. Let's just dig into it. All right, to get the uh, PCB out, it's just four simple screws on this big metal black plate here, and then it falls right off. Then there is one more screw holding the PCB itself in, and after we remove that, the PCB actually comes straight out. We've already disconnected all the cables because we were doing uh, troubleshooting on this at uh, Vintage Geek, so we don't have to disconnect any of those. And well, here it is on the bench ready for testing. Now I'll show you the problem. The uh, five volt rail is shorted directly to ground. So if we just pick a random 7400 series chip on here, uh, VCC is gonna be pin uh, 14 and ground is gonna be pin seven. And if we check across those, 
there we go, 0 0.3 ohms, 0 0.2 ohms. That is not good. Uh, so I'm gonna get to probing. Hopefully I can figure out where the fault is and we can get it replaced. All right, I think, uh, I think I've got it cracked. Uh, at least I hope I do. Um, first things I did was I removed all of the socketed ICs, well, the daughter board and then the two ICs over here. That relieves some of the load on the uh, power rails, but also eliminates them from being the short. I've been using this 74LS74 here as my kind of base test. So I'm checking across power and ground on it. And you can see we're at 0 0.5 ohms, 0 0.4 ohms. Uh, and so I was ch testing power and ground in various places on the board, seeing if I could hone in on where the short is based on the resistance. And this little capacitor here looks like it's a 6.8 microfarad. Uh, if I check across it, it shows 0 0.1 ohms. That's crazy. Uh, it's going down to 0, 0.0 ohms there. So uh, that tells me that that one is at a dead short. So if I just snip it here, lift it up out of the way. Um, if it's not the case, I can just re-solder it back in. But let's check across our 7474 here. Yeah, check that out, 380 ohms. Uh, I mean, that's actually kind of what I would expect for the amount of logic and uh, passives on this board. I think this uh, capacitor shorted and that was pulling our five volt rail to ground. So we'll desolder that one and uh, replace it with one that isn't shorted. Before we can test whether that was indeed the problem or not, we need to figure out how to power the thing. And I'm going to use three Meanwell supplies I had hanging around to get the plus 24 volts, plus five volts, and minus 5.2 volts. I think I can get it all to fit on a single board here, making it a lot easier to move around. I'll attach the drive itself to the board with little L brackets. They were reused from an older project, so I had to spacer them out with some washers. This is all just temporary anyways. It only has to hold together long enough to get the data off the drive. I'll screw down all the power supplies as well, and everything looks like it's going to fit nice and tidy. Now I just gotta wire it up, and this is probably one of the more tedious parts of the job, but it's also one of my favorite. It's just so therapeutic to get all the wires routed. Oh, what's this? My little boy named Sue demanded I take a break. Right, back to work. Wiring up these mean wells is relatively simple. They can be connected in series or parallel without any worries, and they're just great little hobby supplies. I had to dig through my printouts to ultimately find the pinout of the power connector on the back of the drive. Then it was just uh, crimping up little spade connectors and plugging them in. Okay, we're just about ready to try and spin that thing up for the first time, but uh, here's the problem. When it spins up, if it spins up, I'm still a little skeptical that that'll happen, but when it spins up, we don't know how long that drive will be up for. Who knows how long it's gonna last? So what that means is that we need to get the data off of it as fast as possible. So we gotta get it from that finch to another drive that has enough space, and it just so happens that I have a finch on this machine that is 32 megabytes. So it can receive the full 24 megabytes from that drive, no problem. However, that, this finch is full. If we do a .dir3 here, uh, we're gonna get the full directory listing of the finch that is currently installed on this system. And you can see there is a bunch of junk in here. So there's like 4,300 tracks on this and uh, they're almost all completely full. So we can't take any of the data from that finch and put it on this finch without removing the data on this finch. And well, that's a difficult thing. We can remove the data actually really easily, uh, but do we really want to remove the data that's on there? Well, I've spent a ton of time digging through it and I really should not have. It is full of personal information, names, uh, addresses, businesses, money, court cases, stuff that I don't need to be seeing. Uh, and everybody keeps asking about this particular file here, which is OIXX Games. That file is just empty. If we do a s.crt uh, OIXX Games on three, you can see it just says in the ZCRTVU. There is nothing in that ASCII file, completely empty. So there is nothing left on this drive that I personally want to save. 
And conversely, there's a bunch of stuff left on this drive that I do not want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna new disk this drive. We're gonna completely erase it. So we have 32 megabytes completely available to dump that 24 megabyte finch onto it. So we'll start by typing a .sta, get back up to our main uh, menu here. We can see that data six and soft term both have WP lit. That means I've got the right protect on them. So I can't damage our Hawk drives while doing this. Three is Unicomp. That's our finch that is in there right now. And well, let's just, let's do it. <laughs> S dot new disc. Ooh, disc number three. Uh, what are we going to name it? Let's name it um, Porty for Bird. All right. Ready. Goodbye, all you data. Thank you for your service. <laughs> There's no turning back now. It's, it's gone. It uh, pretty much, I think, as soon as this script runs, the first thing it does is a clear. Uh, which pretty much removes any hope of getting the data back off of there. So this is going to take probably uh, five or ten minutes to do it. I have actually no idea how long it's going to take. This is totally uncharted territory. So here we go. All right, that took way longer than ten minutes. It took like an hour and uh, we got a lot of bad sectors. This uh, bad sector thing kept coming up, but I don't know. It says done. Let's type .sta and at least see if it comes up here. Yeah, there's 40. If I do .dir3, we should have a completely empty drive with like 4,000 tracks available. Whew. Okay, now before we spin that other finch up, there's one more thing we got to do. We got to go to p.sysgen. I need to turn the write protect off. So we'll just hit enter on that. The file is at OSN. The disk number is one. There we go. So we want to go to disk drives and we want to add another D11. Control B for enter. There we go. Nine is end of program. So we want to reset the machine back to uh, the D equals prompt. And now we want to spin that other finch up. So, oof, here goes nothing. I'm gonna film it with my phone so I don't have to uh, change the location of anything else right quick. So, kick the lights on. Here goes nothing. There it goes. Spin it up. Uh, that sounds like a crash. That's not good. All right, the way I see it, we have one of three problems going on here. My initial knee-jerk reaction was that we have a head crash, and that could still very much so be the case. But if we have a head crash, well, there's nothing we can do anyways, the drive is junk. So we're just gonna assume that we don't and move on to what I think one of the other two problems is. Uh, we either have the brake dragging um, and that brake is on the main rotational assembly on the back side of it and it's adjustable. So I actually adjusted it to make sure that it is fully clearing now uh, whenever the solenoid pulls it away. I don't know if it was before, but it certainly is now. So if that's a problem, we've eliminated it. Uh, the other problem, which I think is far more likely, is that the grease in the bearings has kind of hardened and solidified. Uh, and it's quite chilly out today, for Texas at least. It's down in the 60s in this room, and this room's pretty well insulated. So I've got it uh, sitting in front of the heater right now to kind of warm it up and hopefully liquefy that grease a little more. I'm gonna let it sit here for probably another uh, 30 minutes or so, let it get nice and warm and heat soak a bit, uh, and then we'll try to spin it up again and see how it sounds. Hopefully it sounds better. All right, drive is uh, nice and warm. The brake has been readjusted and it's back in place with everything plugged up into it. Uh, all we gotta do is flip the switch and see if it spins up. Now, if it does spin up, if it loads the heads and everything sounds good, we're going to spin the Hawk drive up, then spin the second Finch drive up and get to work on dumping that data over. But uh, I'm still skeptical that it'll spin up and sound nice. So there's only one way to find out and that's to flip the switch. Uh, here goes nothing. 
Please spin, baby. Nope. There it goes. Ugh. I still have the heads locked, but I want to see if it'll get up to speed at least. Maybe the bearings will warm up and dry out or warm up and liquefy a little bit the more it spins. It didn't want to spin at first. Uh, I had to give it a little bit of a twist with my finger there. Um, it sure doesn't feel like a head is dragging when I do it by hand, but boy, that sounds awful. That does sound like it finally got to speed. Whoa! It suddenly got quiet. All right, I spun it back down. We're gonna unlock the heads here, spin it up again, and see if it'll actually load the heads. There we go. All right, here goes nothing. Hopefully it still sounds good. I can still hear a little something, but the sound is much improved. The heads never do a self-seek test. We should see them seek back and forth a bunch of times and they never do that. That's, that's not good. All right, the Finch is just sitting here spinning away. You can probably hear it pretty loud over the microphone. Uh, but the reason that it's sitting here just spinning away is that the longer it sits there and runs, the better the bearings sound. Now, <laughs> the bearings don't sound good at all, uh, but they're starting to get better. But the heads have still never loaded. And I think we have one of three things happening. Uh, the first is that the bearings are still so gummed up that the drive does not get up to speed fast enough and the state machine falls on its face. The uh, second thing that could be happening is that the arm that the heads are mounted on is stuck. If that arm has uh, too much friction in it, it'll trigger an overcurrent alert and uh, the state machine will shut down and it'll never actually try to send the heads out. And I don't know how to fix that one either short of taking the HDA off. And we've taken the HD off on the uh, other Finch drive. That is a harrowing and terrifying experience and I really would prefer not to have to do that again. <laughs> the uh, third and final problem that I think we might have is that there could still be a fault on the PCB. Uh, unfortunately, the PCB for the 32 megabyte Finch First of all, it needs to be on that Finch so we can get both Finches up and running at the same time, but also looks completely incompatible with the 24 megabyte Finch. However, I do have a third Finch drive and it's in my Zilog System 8000. I cannot tell just from looking in from the front whether it is a 24 megabyte or a 32 megabyte. So I have no idea what kind of Finch drive it is. So I think I might try to pull that Finch drive out, take a look at what the PCB is, and if the PCBs look interchangeable, I might switch that control PCB over to this drive and see if that fixes our head load problem. So, uh, well, I'm gonna spin this thing down and then uh, I'm gonna try and pull that other Finch drive out and see what kind it is. All right, first thing, let's get that gorgeous ADM3A terminal out of the way. Then we'll slide the whole thing out and the furniture sliders make that super easy. And we'll follow that up by pulling the top off and then ultimately removing the entire top box, which contains the computer. Beneath that is the drive box that has our third Finch drive in it. And it took a bit of fiddling, but I got that box to slide back and then was able to lift it off and out. The Finch drive itself is held in by four screws through rubber isolators on the bottom. After removing those, the drive and mounting brackets all lift out as one. And interestingly, Zilog put this custom board on the back of the drive, and it plugs into both ribbon cable connectors as well as the power connector. With that out of the way though, we can now get the main PCB off. All right, the uh, part number between the two drives is the same, BJ9A1-A for a Finch 9410. They're both two platter drives. This one looks to be in much better condition. It was stored in much uh, more pleasant conditions than the warehouse that Aaron found the other one in. Uh, the PCBs actually look identical with the exception of this little uh, cable right here. On the other drive, this is a different cable, so I won't be able to use uh, this PCB on the other drive with this PCB on this drive. So I think I'm gonna have to pull this PCB out 
and uh, swap it together with this PCB. I'm also tempted to pull this one out, although they look the same between the two drives and have the same connection between them. Uh, but either way, I think that if we put this one in the other drive, that should at least hopefully eliminate the PCB as a potential problem that is causing our issues. Now, this one could have a fault on it that is different or the same as the other one, and it wouldn't solve any of our problems, but it's at least a good first step, I think. All right, PCBs have been swapped. Here goes nothing. Whoa, it did actually seek. It didn't seek quite like I'd expected. It looked real not good, but maybe, <laughs> maybe that's enough. All right, things are weird. Uh, it's not going well. Uh, I got everything else spun up and I decided to get into the Finch Disk Diagnostic to do some seek tests because uh, every time I tried to do anything with it, it just didn't seem to work. So I tried to do a seek test. We'll do a seek test. That is drive uh, number one. Uh, we'll just say disk zero, U, low track is zero, zero, high track FF, uh, no printer. And then we get a busy did not clear, press space to continue. But I can hear the speed of the drive changing. And then if I do that, I get a bunch of error 41s. And the drive is seeking like crazy while it's doing error 41 here. Something funky is definitely going on. So. I'm gonna keep playing with it and see if I can figure out <laughs> if we can get it to pass a seek test Then maybe we can get it to actually do something correctly All right, so I think I figured out what was happening the head the carrier assembly was just really sticky and not in good shape So I started running seek tests at very small seek numbers If I ran too large of a seek number when it did an RTZ it would overshoot and the drive would reset uh, but it would do its automatic calibration and then settle down and be ready for another seek test. So I started doing like a, a seek test from track 0 to track 1, then track 0 to track 10 in hex, then 0 to 20, 0 to 30, 0 to 40. Worked my way all the way up. I'm at 0, 1, FF now. Seems to be seeking back and forth correctly. Uh, so <laughs> let's just go for broke. Let's try to get into the OS and see if there's anything readable on that drive. Uh, I am going to restart the computer. I'm going to hit load opsys. Uh, and then we're going to do H1. And we're looking for max disk equal four here. If we don't see that, that means that it's not detecting that other uh, Finch drive. There we go. <laughs> max disk equal four. It detected it. Uh, okay, 08, 23, 84. Uh, the system time is whatever, noon, we don't care. We we're looking for CRT0 ready here. Okay, do a dot STA. Oh, that's real slow. That's not good. That means it's not reading that Finch drive correctly. Oh, nerds, we got so close. Okay, I was going crazy that the seek test was working, but uh, we couldn't get, read anything out of it and the opsys was locking up. Um, so I had to think about it and I might have had the data cable plugged into the wrong port on the FFC card, which of course would never have worked. I've done dumber things. So I moved the data cable to a different port. Let's give this one more try. I already booted up. We're fully into the operating system. Uh, it says CRT0 ready here. Let's do a dot .sta please work. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that! Finch, 24 megabytes, system, that's it! We're reading the Finch! Uh, the DIR4. <laughs> There's so much stuff. Oh no, oh no, FNC IO error, that's not good, that's not good. Uh, can we get back to a status? Okay. Oh, oh, oh. All right, so the, the finch is not healthy, but we can read some of it. So let's, let's, do, <laughs> let's do something here. All right, so we're going to start with uh, a dot guard four. Um, this is like a software write protect, and we're putting that on uh, that finch, so we can't accidentally erase it. Now we want to do a dot no guard 
3. That is turning off the software write protect for our Finch, the 32 megabytes. Uh, okay, so the next one we want to run is s.dump. This is a utility that dumps uh, one drive all the way over to another drive. So our source disk is going to be 4. Our target disk is 3. Uh, no, I don't want to check volume dates. Uh, and no, we don't want to check volume labels. I don't care. There's nothing on 3. Uh, Prince device is going to be CRT0. Yes, I'm ready. I have no idea how long this is going to take. But... <laughs> But we've gotten further than I ever thought we would get with this drive. Um, whew, okay. <laughs> it's copying files. We got etsys at load over. It has a lot of files to copy. I don't know how many it's going to make it across, though. Um, and I don't know if it fails midway through uh, what happens to the data that we've already got. But um, we're just going to run this for as long as it will let us run it. <laughs> because that's awesome. We may potentially be able to get the data off of that drive yet. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> oh. oh, that's cool. <sighs> well, it copied a lot. But I don't. It didn't get everything, obviously, and we we hit an error. Uh, I/O error four zero 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 one zero zero three B. Unrecoverable disk error cancel. I don't know what to do from here. Uh, I'm gonna try and hit Y and see if it continues on past whatever error it's found on the disk. Uh, maybe it's just a bad track or something. <laughs> no. I'm dumb. Why canceled it? It's been a long day. Uh, all right, let's go back to STA at the very least here. Okay, three says reorg. It didn't copy the volume over. So if I do a .dir3, oh, now I can't even do a directory listing of three. So that did not go well. Um, there is data on three. We know it's there. It copied it over, but Opsys is not recognizing it anymore. So we just have to stop and think about where to go from here. All right, New Day, we've had a bit of a think about this. Uh, the biggest problem that we have is that uh, s.dump just blitzed our Finch drive after we did a news disk on it. So you can see here it says the title of that is, dot, is reorg, and if I do a dot, uh, .dir3 on it, uh, we just get an incorrect disk format, abort 47. So we just need to run an s.new disk on this disk again, get it nice and clean, and then we're gonna copy the individual files off of the other finch onto this finch. Not do a dump, just cop the, copy the files one by one. Uh, and we have a script to do that, but I'll show that to you after we get done with a new disk. Okay, s.newdisk was doing so good on passes one, two, and three, only finding a couple of bad sectors. And then we got to pass five and it just found that bad track that we had yesterday. But uh, it says done here. So if I do a .sta, uh, we can see number three is torty. So if I do a .dir3, we should be able to read the Whipple on it, see that we have a bunch of available tracks. That's good. I've spun up the micro plus finch. So we'll do an s.con. Uh, and then we will reset the machine, type H1, CRT0 ready, let's do a status. We should see both finches, that's good. Let's do a dot .directory4, see if it magically fixed itself overnight. I don't think it did. Uh, there's about seven pages of directory listing here. Yep, that uh, looks to be in the same place that we were getting the failure last time. That's good news, that means, well, it's bad news actually. <laughs> But it means that the script that we wrote will uh, will solve that problem. So if we do s.crt finch1, this is the script that uh, Rin actually punched up based on the directory listing that we were able to get off of that finch drive already. So uh, I sent that directory listing over to Rin. He wrote up a script that wrote this script 
uh, that we can then run that will individually copy each file. You can see here it says copy at sys, uh, and it sets up the, uh, the file, creates a new file with the proper FSI and uh, track sizes and all of that stuff, calculates it, does it all for us. Well, we'll do, we'll just run it, I guess. We'll just do finch. Uh, source disk number is going to be four. Let's cancel out of this right quick. Let me double check everything so we don't mess anything up here. Source disk is four. Target disk is three. Yes. So there we go, it's running an individual copy of just each file, so it's not gonna try and copy over the file system or anything like that from the, the micro plus thing. This should make all of these files readable on that other drive. Uh, but it's got to do this, essentially what we're seeing here, 187 times, uh, and some of that is for libraries, so it's gonna be big and it's gonna take a while. So, well, I'm just gonna sit back down and relax for a bit and babysit this while it goes to town. <laughs> There we go, copy complete. There was one file that was tripping us up because it was way too big. It was 416 tracks for a single file, but we managed to get it copied manually. I think we've got everything backed up. So let's do a .sta. Uh, there we go. Uh, we'll do a .dir on three. And there it all is. Every single file that we could see on the 24 megabyte Finch has been successfully backed up to my 32 megabyte Finch, which is sounding way more healthy. Uh, let's see how much data we actually copied over. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Used 2,713 tracks, available 1,662. I have no idea how full that Finch was, but if uh, my math is correct, I think the 24 megabyte Finch should have around uh, 3,200 tracks total available on it. So with us getting 2,700 tracks, we got the lion's share of the data. We may not have gotten everything, or it's possible that the Finch was just failing when it was trying to calculate how many tracks had been used and how many were available, and we got all the data. Let's see if we can run one of them. We'll do a dot set a dd equals three. Uh, this sets the default drive to the Finch drive, and then we'll run CL menu. See if that does anything. <laughs> Customer master file maintenance. What? Oh man, that's just one application that's hanging out on here. That is epic. There is so much to dig through and discover on this machine. I. Oh man, I'm so excited about it. But we got the data in two places. That was the most important thing. Now we just gotta figure out how to get it from my Finch drive into a file on the PC so we can start using it in the emulator and figure out what's going on. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's awesome. That's so good. Oh. Whew. All right, I've got uh, all three drives spun down and the machine off. It's quiet in here again, and I can uh, finally hear my thoughts and uh, try to recollect on what just went down, what just happened in this room. And uh, we were teetering on the edge of defeat and barely managed to snatch away a victory. <laughs> and what, what a victory. There is... Oh man, I just, I didn't think it was gonna happen. But here we are with an amazing collection of stuff to go through. Because the Micro Plus was a single drive system, everything had to be stored on that drive. So all of these applications are hiding out on there that we don't have for this machine. Uh, I showed one earlier, but there's at least six on there that we can go through and dig through and find. <laughs> that is gonna be amazing. Uh, so I am, <laughs> man, I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and I, you know, the, the the copy was not easy. We had to. We had to revise our script three times and it was a little harrowing, but we got there and while it was copying, it took about an hour, I just, I had to stop and think for a minute. 
The amount of things that had to go right for that to happen is mind-boggling. There's uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of transistors between the computer, the three drives, the terminal. All of them have to work in perfect synchronicity before anything will happen. If any one of those transistors goes wrong, the whole thing falls on its face. And then when we think about the drives, during that copy, the uh, JCL script and the copy routine were on the Hawk drive. So the Hawk drive was searching and reading and searching and reading like crazy throughout the whole copy. And then all of the data is on one Finch drive and it's getting copied over to another Finch drive via blocks of memory in the computer. So we're talking about a massive collection of electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering for the uh, stuff that's painted onto the platters. All of it has to work flawlessly or none of it works at all. And it all worked. What is computing? What is this hobby? I don't, it's just, it's too much for one brain to handle. It, so cool. Oh man, I, <laughs> yeah, I can't even form complete sentences. <laughs> Uh, but, well, there we are. We managed to back up the data. I want to thank uh, Aaron at Vintage Geek so much for letting me uh, borrow this drive and get the data off of it. <laughs> what? Man, what an experience. That was awesome. Uh, also, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging with me on this insanely long episode and uh, enjoying the journey. And I really hope that you guys stick around for more Centurion episodes because we've got even more insane stuff coming up. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode.